What's going on guys? Welcome back to Optimizer Marketing where we are automating marketing solutions for digital marketing companies, digital marketing agencies, and software companies. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about how you can automate your social media and your SEO in pretty much the same process. And we're gonna be actually, this is pretty much like an hour long course but essentially it is covering every single aspect that you would need to know and how to automate your social media marketing and how to automate your SEO um, as a result. So feel free to watch the whole course, watch it on 1.5 speed if you really want to, but we're gonna be breaking down everything from A to B and there's a lot of extra added you know, nuggets in here to really help you understand the whole process. So if you have any questions at all after this and you know I didn't, you know, I didn't cover it, then Leave us a comment, we would love to answer it. We're a relatively small YouTube channel, so that's the, the beauty of leaving comments is we are going to answer it. We are posting a new content every single week, so we are pretty active and we are pretty committed to the YouTube channel right now. So um, definitely let me know if you guys have any questions at all after this. And we are gonna be making new content here very shortly that goes in more depth in each one of these platforms so sit back relax and enjoy and i hope that you learn something with this all right guys grab your coffee sit back relax and pay attention we're going to be walking through many different steps on how you can automate your seo in 2023 and we are going to be diving right in with this first part this first video we're going to be talking about how you can choose a topic that you want to write about because that's ultimately where you need to start with your SEO. And so one of the great places that we like to recommend to start with is with your Google Search Console. Now, chances are you have this set up automatically and if you don't, then you can easily set it up and it does retroactively populate data into your Google Search Console. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like really quickly. So if you go into your Google Search Console, you're gonna be able to see your website. Now again, if you don't have this Google Search Console set up, all you have to do is basically add a property, which will show up on the left. It also will probably have a better user interface if you're not on some sort of expert mode or if you don't already have an existing property, then it'll probably prompt you to put in your website and then it'll ask you to claim the domain. Um, and you may have to put something into your DNS or confirm something with your DNS. Um, and I'm not trying to get too technical here, but uh, generally speaking, it's pretty easy to claim your domain. And then you will get cool little statistics like this and performance insights on um, keywords that you are trying to rank for and or maybe not trying to rank for, but you are showing up for. Um, so this is where Google Search Console is really helpful. So for example, for us, Optimizer Marketing, uh, we are you know business to business software uh, focused digital marketing agency. So when we come into here in our performance tab, we're going to see, um, you know, those kinds of terms populating um, based off of just the copy that's on our website, really, generally speaking. So if we go to average position, uh, make sure that that's checked. You're not going to see it down here if it's not checked. Um, then we can actually start to see some terms. And, you know, we don't have great performance right now with our SEO. Uh, we're actually working on this and it's a project of ours. So. But what we're doing though is, what we do this for clients and stuff, is you'll come in here, Google Search Console, you'll be able to see the queries that you're showing up for. And a lot of these are very relevant to us, you know, B2B SaaS marketing agency, SaaS digital marketing agency, pricing SaaS B2B, all pretty relevant searches. Um, unfortunately, a lot of them we're showing up for pretty low, or I guess you could say really, really high in a negative way in the, in the positions. You know, anything that's higher here is actually bad, so you want it to be lower. Um, so for example, um, one that we could maybe roll with here that could be kind of cool is just like, you know, B2B SaaS marketing budget. That could be a good one to roll with here. That could be a way, f basically we've identified, like this is a term that we want to rank for. Um, ideally speaking, we would choose a term that's in the top I don't know, 20, because it's a lot easier to rank for something in the top 20 than it is anything 20 plus. But in our case, this is one of the lower positions for us. Um, and so we could actually start to develop an article about this and provide some information here and then start to show up higher in the search as a result. And as you can see, there's not a lot of impressions that come from this term really in general, but um, it's something that we might wanna rank for because it's relevant to our space. So something else that we use, so this is one way. 
The other way you can actually, you know, identify terms that you want to start ranking for is through Google Trends. So this is a little bit more nuanced um, and it's definitely not as personalized as Google Search Console would be for you. Um, so what you could do is you could go into trending now and you can actually kind of see like some of the, t the searches that are trending now and then you could actually write a blog post about something that is trending now and sort of relate it back to your business. So this would be pretty hard. I mean like trying to relate uh, frozen fruit recall back to B2B SaaS marketing budget um, will be really difficult but sometimes you'll be able to see something in here and it might make sense. Um, so we're gonna just scroll down and keep seeing. Maybe let's get creative here. Um, let's get creative here. I mean, there's so many things. This is talking about Red Rocks. Um, like this is not maybe something you wanna rank for, but hail injured Red Rocks concert goers. Um, but if let's just pretend like this was just talking about the Red Rocks um, and maybe we could somehow, and, and it was just kind of talking about how great Red Rocks is and like it's, you know, history and all that stuff. And it was just kind of trending. Well, we could write a blog post talking about Red Rocks um, and the marketing budget, like the yearly marketing budget that kind of goes along with it. Um, and we could just, you know, cause that's like something blog worthy. You're going to get some traction because it is trending now. It's getting this many searches. So if you could even just grab 0.01% of 50,000, I mean, what is that? Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to pull this up over here on the other screen. I'm curious actually. So like if we were to grab 0.01% of 50,000. Then you'd get 500. So you, you know, you'd get 500 clicks um, to your thing, and that's not counting impressions too. So there's a possibility that you'll actually, you know, really start to garner some uh, good clicks and, and traffic here. So this is another way that you could essentially try to rank for things and get more traffic to your website. Um, it, like I said, it's not like you're developing a piece of content that is solely talking about B2B SaaS marketing budgets, but you are talking about something that's relevant to marketing budgets. Uh, with something else that is popular in the news. So those are two ways that we generally speaking are going to be selecting terms um, to start writing blog posts for. And in the next video, we are actually going to be talking through how do we actually develop a lot of those um, you know, blogs. And I'm going to show that using Notion AI. So click uh, forward for the next video.